Welcome. <clears throat> Woo. It's the morning. Uh, it's Sunday, the one day that I don't really have to work out that much. Um, excited. Uh, it's Pro Wrestler's Handbook number 10, entitled Give Up Your Ego for the Act. That title alone should let you know what I'm going to talk about in general, but you're going to want to listen to the specifics because we've had a number of examples in uh, Georgia wrestling in particular that have come up lately. Um, and so you can find examples of all of this, all the things I'm going to talk about, usually on Facebook, sometimes um, on Twitter, that kind of thing. I'm going to go through it in detail. <clears throat> I actually have things written out instead of just kind of going with the flow, which is what I usually do, because I wanted to make sure I hit all these points. What am I watching? It's Groundhog Day, um, the movie, because it is Groundhog Day, and I think it's very apropos, because Groundhog Day, whether you knew it or not, is um, it's basically a promotion of Buddhism. What the fuck, Steve? Absolutely. Um, it's about Phil Connor, played by Bill Murray, learning to give up his ego for the act. And the act is life itself. It's learning that the world is a bigger place than him. Um, at first, he tries to indulge, right? He tries to get as much out of things for his own selfish reasons as he can. How many women can he fuck? Um, can he get Annie McDowell in bed if he just learns all about her and, and uh, makes her think that he's just like her? Um, and he finds out he can't do it. And then he goes through sort of a depressive state where he tries to kill himself. His only way to be able to handle his ego not being completely placated is to kill himself. But he finds he can't even do that. And even in the midst of trying to kill himself again and again, he doesn't learn the ultimate lesson which is what leads to his best day ever, where he is the best person ever. Um, and that is, it's through the homeless character that at first he tries to treat very nicely. And then that guy dies. And then Phil um, takes uh, his, the ultimate ego move, which is, I can prevent death which is what people go through. This thing where they try to prevent their own death or they think that, you know, people can live forever. They just don't accept the fact that mortality is a part of life. And so Phil goes through every means possible to try to keep this man alive, but he can't do it. And it's only at that point does he realize that it's only by accepting the fact that we are a player in the game and being the best that we can be. And so Phil goes through his perfect day, which is he's completely selfless. He has completely given up his ego for the act. And only when he does that does he find happiness and only does he break out only then does he break out of the cycle. Right? Gets the girl embraces the town he has grown to hate because he knows it so well. Broken out of the cycle of the same day repeating itself. Pretty fucking deep shit. And that's Buddhism. Certainly not the West, right? The philosophies of the West are not about self-sacrifice. They purport to be. Yeah, even Christianity, allow me to get deep, is not about self-sacrifice. It's about somebody else, Jesus, who sacrificed himself for you. And so it's about trying to acknowledge that sacrifice and do the best you can. But ultimately, it's not about giving yourself up completely because that's not a very popular thing to tell people. That's not a way that you really engage people, especially Americans. Americans hate the notion of giving up their ego for the act. But in pro wrestling, it's when it works best. Let's get into it. Giving up your ego for the act. So Jeff posted a thing, um, Jeff G. Bailey, about um, the NWA 53rd. Yeah, uh, a famous bit. I'll just sum it up quickly. Georgia Wildside went down there. 
The Florida guys were doing their thing for the NWA 53rd. The Georgia guys attacked in an invasion angle. It was wild fucking fracas. The Florida people didn't let anybody know what was going on. So you had security fucking fist fighting the Georgia guys. The Georgia guys having to fight fans and all this kind of shit. Matt Griffin sort of of chimed in on this thing as well. And Bill Barron's. It's really fucking great. You should go find it. You should go find all the stuff attached to it. I read about this thing. Of course, I'm friends with Jeff, so we fucking talk about it. Um, But I also read about it in Howard Brody's book. Howard Brody, who is one of the um, big Florida people who was involved in this thing. And and so the Georgia guys finally get in there, leave the Florida guys for dead at the end of the show, and it's fucking awesome. And it should have led to huge angles in Florida, huge angles in Georgia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but it didn't. Uh, because the Florida guys could not resist rising from the dead off of the mat instead of letting it end with that, like, holy shit moment, right? Luke, I am your father. Oh, my hand gets cut off. Holy fuck. But they couldn't leave it there to leave us wanting more. They had to get up and cut promos. They cut promos. And at that point, Bill Barons of the Georgia contingent said, fuck these guys. They just fucking ruined our thing. We're not doing it. And so they didn't. And then Ron Niemi um, sort of chimed in. He's one of the big Florida guys as well. Um, so that's the that's the stage. Now let's talk about it. Should the Florida guys have just stayed down after they got beaten up to leave people wanting more? Of course, they should have given up their ego for the act. It's essential. It's what selling is. When you sell individual wrestlers, For others, you're giving up your ego for the act. You're showing vulnerability to elevate the other person and to elevate your match. That's why selling is so important. Because it's showing vulnerability. Because it's creating a connection between you and your audience. Now, a lot of old school guys you know, they rail against like, ah, oh, you guys go through these matches so fast and you don't sell enough and you have to slow down. I mean, these are all things that young wrestlers and all wrestlers have heard a million times before. And I think a mistake that old school guys make is they don't really explain why. And even if they explain why, it's just surface, right? Slow down so they can see what you're doing. The real reason to slow down is because you're trying to connect. Magicians, skilled magicians, can move very quickly, <clears throat> but the but the best ones explain what they're doing as they're going along because they want to engage you, right? It's not all about them. It's about the connection. Just in a small way, giving up your ego for the act. You know? So yeah, the Florida guy should have stayed dead. But let me go. Now, here here we go to the controversial part. If Bill had been able to give up his ego for the act, they could have engaged in one of the greatest angles in two states in history. And we would still be talking about it instead of Jeff having to bring it up and then engaging in a conversation for a while and then it fades away again. It would have been one of the all-time great things. But Bill, because everything didn't go perfectly his way and he got upset, scrapped a great thing. Now, he would defend it as, no, they scrapped it by fucking up. But nobody's perfect, right? Wrestlers expect promoters and bookers to be perfect. Bookers expect their promoters to be perfect and the wrestlers to be perfect and perfectly engage what they're supposed to do. And promoters often expect perfection from their bookers and the people who work for them. Folks, nobody's perfect. And part of that is giving up your own ego for the act and understanding that. Because you yourself are not perfect. Do you see how this give up your ego for the act can make everything better, everything smoother? Yeah, but it requires the loss of your own ego. Of course, as performers and as people involved in wrestling or in any activity, there is an ego involved. But the point is, 
for you to have the ability to see the bigger picture. It's bigger than just you. It's your match. It's your match in context with the card. It's your card in context with the promotion. It's your promotion in context of the scene that in which you reside. It's your scene in which you reside in context of pro wrestling as a general thing. It's pro wrestling as a general thing as part of the entertainment world. Give up your ego for the act. Bill, and of course, I, I, don't, I shouldn't have to preface this, but these are all my opinions. They're just the right ones. Are they not? Bill, through his own ego, cut off all of those Georgia wrestlers and then all the Florida people from being able to engage in something that was bigger than all of them. Give up your ego for the act. Yep. Here's a great example. <clears throat> so Gunnar Miller has been ruffling feathers and doing his thing and wrestling once a month in Southern Honor. Sean Legacy is a guy who people have spoken very highly of. He should be up for most improved. He should even be up for wrestler of the year. And Sean Legacy is so great. I'll say this for fucking Sean Legacy. He should have been promoting the thing more. Um, but he didn't promote his match more until he finally did, until Gunner kind of goaded him into it. And then he did it. But you know what Sean Legacy did do? He lost to Gunnar Miller in less than two fucking minutes. And it was absolutely the right fucking thing to do. And now some dumb people were like, Oh, no, but he's one of the highest rising stars. Sean Legacy, when push came to shove, gave up his ego for the act. Gunnar Miller is the one who's going to be a huge fucking star in Southern Honor. Not Sean Legacy for now. So Sean Legacy, who people had said good things about, but I honestly could have given him a fuck about. Just another fucking, you know, guy who looks pretty good on a wrestling poster. There's a fucking a million of those in Georgia and everywhere. But that told me that that guy gets it. And he's now on my personal radar, whatever that's worth. Because he gave up his ego for the act. So... Good for you, fucking Sean Legacy. Now we're going to talk about what that should mean for you later. Yeah. Um, part of being a pro wrestler, and it's part of the reason that you love being a pro wrestler or a public figure, is because you are a public figure. And that means sometimes you got to give up your ego for the act of pro wrestling. That means you have to monitor your behavior. That means, yes, you have to check yourself. It's one of the prices of being involved in a thing where you're asking other people to engage with it, give up their money and their resources to come see you do it, is you have to give up your ego for the act sometimes. Ask Jacob Ashworth if he wishes he could have given up his ego for the act just a little bit. Right? And now it looks like he's coming back to Southern Fried, and that's all well and good. Yeah. But I'm wondering if he's learned anything. And the number one thing that would help him more than anything else is to give up his ego for the act. Not just with these sort of public apologies that aren't really apologies and all this stuff. But if he's really willing to sacrifice. Now, there's a part of him that understands this. Because when he was contacting all these different promoters, he would say, I'll job to whoever you want. I'll do whatever you want to do. But some of them got nervous. You know why? Because deep down, deep down, they sense that he's just grin-fucking them. You know what that term means? They use it in corporate America. These guys who green fuck you are guys that tell you whatever that you want to hear, but they don't really believe it inside. They're really good at appearing to be down for the company, but deep down they know that you're just selfish. We'll see if Jacob Ashworth has learned to not be selfish. It's very telling, too, that it's it's success that really shows you who a person is and any flaws they have come right to the forefront because people may have grin fucked their way to the top, but once they get to the top, 
then you really get to see who's going to give up their ego for the act. Who's willing to job when it counts and when they're asked to do it? Or who immediately goes to, no, but I think it would hurt everything because I'm such a huge star. Give up your ego for the act. That's not to say that sometimes you can't make intellectual decisions and sometimes you aren't correct that you shouldn't job. But if everything gets clouded behind your own ego, you won't be able to make the proper choices. Right. Um, Ashton Starr put out a post that I thought was fucking fascinating and a ton of wrestlers obviously heard his call and said hallelujah and that was what's up with these fucking promoters they don't reward the loyal people to them they pay them nothing and then they bring in these outside names and pay them a ton of money and they never show the proper respect but what is Ashton really talking about fundamentally that really appealed to a lot of wrestlers it's this. It's that promoters and bookers can't give up their ego for the act either. And it causes them to overlook the people that are toiling in obscurity, relative obscurity in their promotions. But there's also an interplay here where there are some wrestlers that are seriously overlooked. And then there are the ones that are like, shouldn't I just be fucking rewarded for being a reliable performer? And a lot of people are hearing this and applying it to their own jobs. Yeah, I'm just a fucking reliable dude. And I see it at my fucking job as well, where a lot of younger people are like, fuck, I fucking and put in the time I've been here X amount of years and blah 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 same shit that wrestlers say about promotions and pro wrestling and what I tell those young wrestlers or, the, or the, those young workers that I work with is the same thing I'm going to tell you now wrestling people you gotta be fucking special you gotta show not tell you have to give up your ego for the act and that means if you're feeling that pinch of, I'm being overlooked, you haven't completely given up your ego yet. Now, this might sound like I'm a, some kind of corporate shill. Oh, yeah, that really works as far as the people up top. But the people up top, they got to give up their egos too. That's the interplay. That's the cost. If you've got your regular people who have been with your promotion, they're the ones who should be reaping the most benefit from these outside names. Not you getting to fucking lock arms and glad hand and hold hands with a star. And we all know who these promoters and bookers are who want to book these people from the outside just so they can get FaceTime with them. So they can appear that they're the great savior and look how great I am and I'm with this person. And they're, they're the ones who are always wanting to go backstage and take pictures with the fucking wrestlers that are names. And I can go through a million examples of that. But that's not the point. The point is you bring in these outside names to put your promotion over, to put your guys over. And whatever people want to talk shit about me at the end of the day, that's what PCW was. And everybody knew it. If you're somebody that I was bringing in from the outside, even if you were a notable name in the Georgia area or in the South in general or nationally, you were there to make my guys look good. Period. And I fucking went head up with the biggest fucking names in wrestling when they would come to my promotion. Awesome Kong didn't want to fucking do a job. She did. And I had to fucking go head up at the biggest show I ever booked and promoted. I had to fucking square off with her. But I did it. I got all the names to give up what I needed them to give up for my guys. Yes, those names got more money than my guys. Absolutely that happened. PCW, if I trained you, generally I didn't pay you. I'll just be upfront about that because I, I pay, you paid me basically nothing to get trained. So that was the trade. But at the end of the day, I made sure those names gave up the ego for the act. That doesn't mean they always went under, but it means they always gave the rub. So for Ashton Starr, that's a post worth reading. And it's a good lesson for wrestlers as well. That everything doesn't have to be a conflict. That you can leave peaceably. But maybe you can find a way to maneuver as well. This is all a fucking game. 
Figure out how to win. Expressing yourself publicly is fine, and I'm glad Ashton Starr did it. I think he's the right guy to do it. But if the only thing that you get from that is, yeah, fuck that promotion, I'm leaving, and that's what seemed to be the message from a lot of the wrestlers, you're not fucking winning the game. Figure it out. Give up your ego for the act. But understand that sometimes the act you're involved with isn't worth being part of, be, isn't worth playing. And that's part of it too. But sometimes it's a matter of making your feelings known in a direct and forthright manner, like a fucking grown up. Go talk to that promoter that you got a problem with. And then at that point, if they fucking blow you off or you feel unsatisfied after talking to them, cool, move on. But there's a lot of public bitching that can be, I, I hate when people just say, don't ever do anything publicly. No, sometimes you got to do things publicly to shake things up. That's what I do. Um, but there are also times, have you pursued every avenue that you can privately as well? Hmm. Um, part of giving up your ego for the act is giving praise where it's due. And the thing I hate about public praise is more often it's so self-serving. And it's one of those things they used to say about Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was very effusive with praise because it was fucking free. And while he was fucking everybody out of their money in ECW, let's just be real. I know he's, you know, Paul Heyman is on everybody's fucking Mount Rushmore for different things. But let's be real. He fucked guys over in ECW. Big time. And the, one of the ways he kept their loyalty and kept them happy was being very effusive with praise. Right? So praise in and, of, in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean anything. However, when I see somebody giving up their ego for the act to give praise, then I know that it's genuine. Right? When Josh Wheeler put on Twitter, and I don't really keep up with my Twitter as much. I'll post stuff, but I never read Twitter. Right? But I heard that he said, basically, oh my God, Stephen Platinum is actually saving Georgia wrestling or something to that effect. Um, that told me something. Um, that's Josh learning to give up his ego for the act. And I, even when we interviewed him on Tipping Point, I could hear that there were elements. Now, I'm not just going to give this carte blanche statement of Josh Wheeler is perfect. Um, on the contrary, there's still things that kind of make me go like, what the fuck? But he's beginning to give up his ego for the act a little more. A little more. Whining a little less. Understanding a little more. Reaching out privately to get outside viewpoints. All of these things are about giving up your ego for the act. Acknowledging that you perhaps don't know everything or that the perspectives of the people around you perhaps aren't 100% accurate and you need to get other ones. All of these things, which all of us should be doing, is about giving up the ego for the act. And I do appreciate the praise, Josh Wheeler. Um, and I take it for what it is, which is it's not just me mm, wrapping myself in the warm blanket of somebody who probably would have considered me an enemy now having to acknowledge that I am indeed doing this for more than just the views, bro, but I actually do want to contribute. Um, but as a call um, that I need to continue to serve. And so that's what I will do. And I will continue to improve. Um, you've heard me acknowledge my mistakes. That's giving up my ego for the act. And I have to continue to do that. And I have to do even better with that. Um, once in a while, I do answer critics, and I can be very harsh about it, there's no doubt, but there's times where criticism is warranted, and I have to listen. And I'm lucky because I have a 12-year-old who fucking checks me all the time and tells me what I need to fix and what I need to do better, and I have learned, even as her father, to defer because she does know what the hell she's talking about. <sighs> Ultimately, let's wrap this up. Giving up your ego for the act. Part of that is giving criticism where it's warranted and taking criticism in the proper spirit. And here's a great example that you can see right now on that 
post about the 53rd, I went in because Ron Niemi kind of came in there and part of it is he was just joking and I think that that's genuine. He was, he sort of railed against Larry Goodman because Larry Goodman had posted a thing about how like, yeah, they did a show the, the night before and I didn't really care for the IPW hardcore show and Ron Niemi sort of went in at, at Larry Goodman and, um, and then uh, Ace didn't didn't get it. And Ace is always very serious. Yeah, because blah, 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 blah. And then Ron Niemi kind of made him look bad by going like, yeah, I'm just fucking joking with Larry. I've been fucking joking with him for 20 years. But then I went in and just went, yeah, that commented about Larry wasn't really warranted. And then, and then I ripped into the fucking Florida people. Yeah, you guys getting up after the fucking, after you were left for dead is so fucking dumb. And Howard Brody, even trying to take the side of the Florida people, even when he was doing it from your perspective, it still came across as fucking stupid. And you know what Ron Niemi did? Instead of continuing the fucking fight, he just went, you're right, we should have been left for dead. Here's the reason we did it. And I always, I always usually hate when people have a, a, a you're right, but everybody hates the but, right? But um, when he went, yeah, we, you know, this is the reason because you have to understand the emotion. Like, like I haven't been in fucking wrestling and don't understand fucking emotion. But that's neither here nor there. I had to give up my ego for the act because that was my first response. But I had to go like, no, let's hear, let's hear Ron out. And then he goes on to say, yeah, we should have fucking laid there for dead. <laughs> we should have done it for the good of the angle. That's Ron giving up his fucking ego for the act and admitting. Because he came in there all fire and bluster. Where's people thanking us for fucking doing that angle in the first place so well? And fuck you, Larry, basically, even though he said it jokingly, in that joke was a hint of truth, which was like, fuck you. <laughs> and, you know, and then defending himself. But at the end of the day, Ron Yemi was able to give up his ego for the act and say, yeah, we fucking should have done it. Taking criticism in the proper spirit is part of giving up your ego for the act. But Ron is an old pro, man. And um, I, res I respect the fuck out of that guy. I, I, he was even part of PCW, and I would see him when I would go to Florida shows. And when I'm, I'm now I'm going to start going to Florida shows, and I hope to see him again. Yeah. Uh, let's, now this is the final thing. Um, giving your ego up for the act of pro wrestling. I wrote it down, so I'm reading it just because I want to make sure I hit this point. Um, it is making the conscious decision to maximize whatever you're a part of, which usually means transcending your own ego. When push comes to shove, get out of your own fucking feelings and your own ego first when making decisions in a pro wrestling ring. Sell more. Go slower. Hit your time. Be a fucking good soldier. Job when it's warranted. And if you're going to job, job in the most effective way to get the other person over that you can. Bookers, acknowledge the fucking good soldiers and fucking reward them. I hate the, <laughs> you deserve it, because I think it's just too much behind the curtain and it's basically saying all you have to do is do your time long enough. But you know good and goddamn well, Bookers, who deserves more. And wrestlers, you have to acknowledge the fact that sometimes it's better if you're not part of a promotion for a while. So you don't get stale. Look how Southern Honor, you know the real key to why Southern Honor continues to fucking roll over everybody? Because they got rid of guys that you thought couldn't, you can't get rid of these guys. They're too important. But they moved on for whatever reason, the whole GPW and one fall, whatever the fuck. But fresh faces are a part of pro wrestling. They always were. And part of that is giving up your ego and just going, maybe it's better if I'm not here a while and I try things elsewhere. And maybe I will fail at the new spot, but I'm going to go try and accept the possibility of failure. Yeah. Samurai goes into battle living with death in his heart. That's the only way that you can succeed is you have to acknowledge that shit might fuck up. And you have to acknowledge that sometimes the fault is yours. You know? So it's about making the conscious decision to maximize whatever you're a part of. And ultimately, not being such a whiny bitch about it all. This has been Pro Wrestler's Handbook.